Hello children, it's time for the 13th chapter of The Butterfly Lion by Michael Mopurgo and this chapter is called And the Lion Shall Lie Down with the Lamb. The old lady turned to me and smiled. There, she said, that's my story. And what about Bertie? I knew as I asked that I shouldn't have, but I had to know. He's dead, dear. The old lady replied, It's what happens when you get old. It's nothing to worry about. It's lonely, though. That's why I've got Ch Jack. And Bertie, like his lion, lived on to a good age. He's buried out there under the hill beside the White Prince. She looked back at the hill for a moment. And that's where I belong, too, she said. She tapped the table with her fingers. Come on, time to go. Back to school with you before they miss you and you get yourself into trouble. We wouldn't want that, would we? She laughed. Do you know, that's just what I told Bertie all those years ago when he ran away from school. Do you remember? She was on her feet now. Come on, I'll drive you. And don't look so worried. I'll make sure no one sees you. It'll be like you've never been gone. Can I come again? I asked. Of course you can, she said. I may not always be easy to find, but I'll be here. I'll just tidy away the tea things and then we'll go, shall we? It was a very old-fashioned car, black and upright and dignified, with a leathery smell and a whiny engine. She dropped me at the bottom of the school park by the fence. Take care, dear, she said, and be sure you come again soon, won't you? I'll be expecting you. I will, I replied. I climbed the fence before I turned to wave, but by that time the car had gone. To my huge relief, no one had missed me, and best of all, Basha Beaumont was in the sick room. He had gone down with measles. I just hoped his measles would last a long time, a very long time. All through supper, I could think of nothing but Bertie Andrews and his white lion. Stew and dumplings and then semolina pudding with raspberry jam. Again. It was as I was picking my way through my slimy semolina that I remembered Bertie Andrews had been at this school. Maybe, I thought, maybe he'd had to sit here and eat slimy semolina just as we did now. I looked up at the honours boards around the dining hall, at the names of all the boys who had won scholarships over the years. I looked for Bertie Andrews. He wasn't there. But then I thought, why should he be? Maybe, like me, he wasn't brilliant at his schoolwork. Not everyone wins scholarships. Cookie, Mr Cook, my history teacher, was sitting beside me at the end of my table. Who are you looking for, Mapurgo? he said suddenly. Andrews, sir, I said. Bertie Andrews. Andrews? Andrews? Uh, there's an Albert Andrews who won the Victoria Cross in the First World War. You mean him? Cookie scraped his bowl clean and licked the back of his spoon. Oh, I love raspberry jam. You'll find his name in the chapel, under the east window, under the war memorial. But he wasn't killed in the war, you know. He lived down at Strawbridge, that place with the lion on the gateway, just across the main road. He died maybe 10, 12 years ago, soon after I came to teach here. The only old boy ever to win the VC. That's why they put up a memorial plaque to him in the chapel after he died. I remember the day his wife came to unveil it, his widow, I should say. Poor dear, just herself and her dog in that great big place. She died only a few months later. Broken heart, they say. You can, you know. You can die of a broken heart. That house has been empty ever since. No family to take it on. No one wants it. Too big, you see. Shame. I said I wanted to be excused to go to the toilet. I hurtled down the passage, out across the courtyard and into the chapel. The small brass plaque 
was exactly where Cookie had said it was, but hidden by a vase of flowers. I moved the vase to one side. The plaque read, Albert Andrews, V.C., born 1897, died 1968, an old boy of this school, and the lion shall lie down with the lamb. All night long, I tried to puzzle it out. Cookie was wrong. He just had to be. I never slept a wink. Wow, isn't that mysterious? Well, we shall find out in the final chapter of the book next time exactly what has happened. Until then, God bless. Say your prayers. Get ready for the final chapter.